I'm excited about the opportunity to come to you today because I do believe the Lord has a word of encouragement, of inspiration, and also a word of challenge for his people and people everywhere in this moment and, yes, in this season. I want to read some words from you for you that are written in the book of Acts in the New Testament. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 from the New King James translation, and I just want you to hear this one verse um, for this particular time. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And I want to use this particular scripture, this particular verse in this critical time to preach a message entitled First Responders. First Responders. Many of us have been uh, watching closely to the television, and I don't know what your particular news outlet is. I am a CNN junkie. I will admit it. I need to join the club so that I can get some help to be weaned off CNN, but you may be Fox, God forbid if you're Fox. You may be MSNBC or any other news outlet, but I know all of us have been watching with great anticipation and in some instances great anxiety and hearing all of the things that are happening. We get an update on how many people have been tested and how many new cases of the coronavirus have been, have been found and, and how many deaths across the world there have been as a result of this very tragic, tragic virus that is wreaking havoc on our world. Yes, it started in China, but it now becomes the burden of the world to address and deal with. And as we're watching that, we can't help but see those people who are on the front lines. We see the people out there. I'm not talking about the President of the United States. He's at the White House. I'm not talking about his staff there at the White House. I'm not talking about all of those persons that we see on TV who are standing behind a podium such as I am. I'm talking about those who have on masks and those who are out there with the masses and are taking temperatures and are giving people tests and are at checkpoints to make sure that people have testing and have direction as to where they can go. I'm talking about the front line folks, people who we call first responders, police officers and uh, EMT folks and doctors and nurses. And now I just heard that folks who are finishing medical school, they're not even taking their final exam. Their final exam will be a practical as they've been called into service. They are now on the front lines of this pandemic and they are first responders putting themselves in harm's way to protect all of us. And we ought to just thank God and give the Lord a hand clap of praise and bless the name of God for those first responders who are putting their lives on the line to help other people, to help humanity, to help people survive and to give people a sense of comfort and protection in a time where everything seems wishy-washy. We thank God for the men and women in uniform. We thank God for those doctors and those nurses who have sacrificed their own families in order to be first responders, in order to be there to aid and give people aid and assistance. Listen, when they need it the most. But I need to talk to you, church. I need to talk to you, believers. Those of you who are huddled in your homes, those of you who, who are, are in tight, locked in, those of you who are giving elbows, be concerned. That is what we're being told by the CDC. But I need to remind us, even as Jesus, the risen Lord, reminds his disciples in this text that you and I, those of us who are blood-bought children of the king, those of us who've been dug up by the plowshares of the gospel, you and I were called to be 
first responders. You and I, who bear the name of Jesus Christ, you and I have been called to be on the front lines, not to be in the back, not to be huddled up and afraid for our own lives, but in this season, the church is supposed to be shining bright. And who is the church? Not this building, but the church resides in you and I. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The church resides in each one of us. And in this season, we are the first responders. Can you imagine what would happen if the first responders got scared and didn't respond? Can you imagine if the EMT people said, you know what, I got to protect me and my family. I can't go out and perform this crucial service to the public. Well, that's what happens when a church closes. The first responders take a break. Wouldn't it be terrible for the first responders to take a vacation at the time when there's a tragedy and first responders are needed the most? So I came today to remind you and I, who are the people of God, who bear the name of Jesus Christ, that we are called for a time such as this. We are God's first responders. When we look at this text, we see Acts chapter 1, that this is post-resurrection. Jesus has already died on the cross. He's already suffered for our sins and paid them in full and is nailed to a wooden tree. He's already been taken down from the cross. Joseph of Arimathea has already begged his body. He's already been laid in a borrowed tomb. He's already been resurrected. The stone has been rolled away. Mary has already come and preached the first Easter sermon ever preached. Come, the Lord is alive. And now... The disciples are doing what Jesus instructed him to do pre-resurrection. They're in Jerusalem, and they're waiting on that promised gift. What is that gift? The Holy Spirit. And if somebody ought to be glad today that technology is not what's connecting us spiritually today, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit. If you couldn't see me, you could feel me by virtue of your prayer. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't let no wires and no cables mess your mind up. We are able to connect whether you could see me or not in prayer. How many of you know that prayer still changes things? He told the disciples to wait for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And there they were in Jerusalem together, huddled up, afraid because of the crisis of Jesus' death. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to think. But they remembered. I wish I had some people that could hear me preach today. They remembered what they had been taught. And that was, wait on the Lord. Uh, can I just stop there for a quick minute and, and, and tell somebody you need to wait on the Lord. To, uh, be of good cheer and wait on the Lord. They who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. COVID-19 notwithstanding. That's what God's word says. And they waited on him. And Jesus, the Bible says, appears to them. And when he appears to them, you'll see in verse 7, they start asking all kinds of questions. What's going to happen now? What are we going to do? Are you going to return now the kingdom to God's people? What, 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 what? And I'm sure there are many people who are watching me today who have all those questions. You're concerned about when you're going to be able to come back to work. You're concerned about how you're going to pay your bills. You're concerned about when your children are going to be able to go back to school. You're concerned. You're concerned. And you have thousands of questions. But I want you to hear what Jesus says to the disciples who have thousands of questions. He says, that's none of your business. He said, that's not for you to know how this thing, you know it will conclude, but it's not for you to know. It's not necessary for you to know when it's going to end and how it's going to happen. And Jesus says in verse 8, but what you need to know is that you are first responders. What you need to know is there is a role for you to play as my disciples, as my church. And he says to them in the first instance, you're going to receive power. Oh, I wish I had some praying people. He says, you're going to receive power. And that's really the first thing I want to tell you about first responders. In order for first responders to be who they need to be and to do what they need to do, they have to be authorized. Can I tell you somebody in the room that first responders must first 
be authorized. And that is what you and I have been. You and I have been authorized for a time such as this through the power of the Holy Spirit. That dolomite, that dynamite, that explosive energy that comes to those of us who have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look, we've been authorized to handle this crisis. We, we've been authorized to pray for God's people. We've been authorized to stand in the gap on behalf of the world. We have been authorized by the power of the Holy Ghost to stand up and let our light so shine that men will see us and magnify our God which is in heaven. That's what we've been called to do. That's why God gave us his Holy Spirit. Not for us to shout and dance alone, not for us to speak in tongues alone, but to be a beacon of light in a dark world. And if ever the power of the Holy Ghost ought to be evident, it ought to be evident right now. And I want you to say to yourself, I've been authorized for a moment like this. As a first responder, I've been authorized. And that authorization takes forms. That means we've been prepared and we've been credentialed as, as an authorized agent of the king, as a witness to God, you and I, by the power of the Holy Spirit, listen, we've been prepared. God's been preparing us for this. Why do you think you've been praying? Why do you think you've been studying God's word? Why do you think you've been trying to live right? God was preparing you and credentialing you for a time like this. And I wish there was somebody who didn't understand why God had them uh, struggling with a little bit of resources. Uh, he had you to struggle with a little bit of resources because he wanted you to know when you didn't have anything, you could still lean and depend on him. God had you struggling because he wanted you to know that when all the resources were scarce, that your source was still on the throne. And I wish I had two or three people somewhere in your living room who didn't mind dancing in your pajamas to give God some glory for the fact that you've been prepared prepared and credentialed by the power of the Holy Spirit to be a first responder at a time like this. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, as first responders, we must be authorized, and God has already authorized us through the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's not all Jesus said to his disciples. In the second instance, he said not only must first responders be authorized, but first responders, he says in the text, he says, not only you shall be my witnesses, or you shall be witnesses to me. First responders have to be both fearless and faithful. He says, you're going to be witnesses to me. See, see, if you're going to be a first responder, you can't be scared. See, a first responder, that means when something happens, you're going to be scared to run to the thing. See, 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 first responders are really only acknowledged when there's a problem. They're only acknowledged when there's a crisis. And, and, and if you're going to be a first responder, you can't be scared of every crisis. You can't be scared of every situation. You can't be scared every time something happens. You can't be scared every time you can't understand something. But as a first responder, you've got to be both fearless and faithful to what you're committed to do. See, that's what it means to be with a witness in the text. We like to glorify and glamorize that term, but the word witness is translated in the Greek as martyr. And a martyr is one who gives their life for the cause. And the problem perhaps might be is that we got too many people who've been comfortable with cushion Christianity. And so now that the rubber has met the road, we scared. But I stopped by to tell you, Jesus says to Peter on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't care what they say. I'll be preaching, I'll be teaching, I'll be witnessing until witnessing days are over. Why? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. But I'm fearless and I'm trying to be faithful. Doesn't mean I don't get anxious. Doesn't mean I'm not concerned. But what it does mean is I'm guided by the Word of God and the Spirit of God rather than by my feelings of anxiety and fear. That's why you got to feed your spiritual man so that it can do the leading and not 
your feelings. I feel a Barbara Streisand spirit coming over me. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. And too many of us are caught up in our feelings when we ought to be caught up in our assignment. God has called us to be witnesses. Stand up, church, and tell this world that God is real, that our faith is real, and that our faith still matters. He tells them, and you're going to be witnesses to me. You're going to be my martyrs. You're going to stand up and the world will know that why you go to church is real. They will know that why you spend time and put your money in church because it's real. And we got a real situation and we need some real witnesses and we need some real martyrs. And we need some real first responders. So responders, in the first instance, Jesus teaches us certainly must be authorized. And that authorization comes by the power of the Holy Spirit, which both prepares us and credentials us. But not only must first responders be authorized, but first responders must be fearless and faithful if we're going to be his witnesses. And the final thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to let y'all go on this. First responders must be willing to go wherever they're needed the most. First responders got to be willing to go wherever they're needed the most. Too many of us are, are in the army and we're telling the general where we're going to go. We sign up and we're telling everybody, I'll do that, but I won't do that. I, I'll go there, but I won't go there. I stop by to tell you, first responders don't pick where they're going to go. They're a sign based on the level of the crisis. And Jesus is telling his disciples, yeah, you've got to go. You're going to start in Jerusalem. All of us can, can be first responders in Jerusalem. That's home. That's where it's comfortable. All, all of us can be first responders in our community. Uh, those of us who will venture out and make sure that people are okay in our communities at your own risk. You've you got to make sure that Judea is taken care of. But child, when it comes to Samaria... When it comes to those folk that don't talk like you, don't act like you, don't look like you, don't drink like you, don't eat like you, we, we have a problem with Samaria, but that's not what I read in the text. If you're going to be a first responder, you got to go where you need it. Your preferences are not what's germane. What's important is how fearful, how faithful you are to where the Lord needs you the most. And somebody in the room, somebody in your space where you are, needs to be reminded that God is sending us outside of Jerusalem, Zion. God is sending us outside of Judea, Zion. God is sending us to the Samarias of the world, to the places where the gospel needs to be preached in all of its fullness and with all of its power. And maybe Corona is waking up the church to remind us that we got to keep on going, that we're getting comfortable where we are, but we got to keep on pressing and keep on crying and keep on clawing our way until we get to where the Lord would have us to be. It's kind of like a teabag. If I was preaching the anatomy of a teabag, I'd have to say something about its string. I'd have to say something about the looks, outer looks of its bag. I'd have to say something about the inner workings of the tea leaves. I'd have to, I'd have to really open all of that up. But, but, but suffice it to say, the only aspect of the anatomy of the teabag that's apropos for now is the string. See, a teabag is only good, help me preach, in hot temperatures. The only way to get what's inside the tea bag on the outside of a tea bag is it got to have some hot water. Tea bags aren't appreciated as much in cold water because they don't impact as much in cold water. Tea bags aren't appreciated much in warm water because they don't necessarily have the impact in warm water. But baby, when you start boiling the water, when you get it good and hot, that's when a tea bag can make a difference. And God is saying, I've got your string, tea bag, and I'm placing you in some hot water. Don't get scared. Don't run. That's why I made you like I made you in the first place. First responders, you got to be willing to go where you need it the most. You've been duly authorized by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have every reason to be his witness because of what he's already done in your life. 
such that you should be both fearless and faithful. And if God is holding your string today, you ought to be able to go wherever God needs to send you. I don't know if it's to your neighbor's house, but if it's boiling over there, don't worry. That's how God made you. That's when you'll have the most impact, when you're willing to give of yourself. First responders, what else can I say to you? But it's time to sign up. It's time to re-enlist. It's time to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Lord, I'm concerned. Lord, I've got some anxiety. Lord, I've got my own family to take care of. Lord, i got some bills that need to get paid. Lord, I don't know where my next check is coming from. But Lord, here I am. Send me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving. I'll, I'll be a living sanctuary for the first responders. People may not be able to get to the church in this sanctuary, but they ought to be able to get to you as a living sanctuary. They ought to know the safety and the power of God by virtue of your relationship or their relationship, not with this building, but with you. Don't forget who you are, church. Don't forget who we have been called to be. We are God's first responders. Let us be the church. Let us be the living sanctuaries that men and women, boys and girls, might know above all else that God is real and his love, his grace, and his mercy are ever present with those who will simply believe and call upon the name of Jesus. Thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed that awesome worship experience. Remember, every week at 10, 15 a.m., the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, and we want to worship God in spirit and in truth. Check in again to ZionDC.org where you'll find all the information about other offerings that we have here at Zion Baptist Church. We are a worshiping community. Hope to see you again soon. God bless.